The 10 Worst Songs of 2022 comes out December 17th. Overdose patrons signed up before December 12th will get their name on the video, plus other tiers will have an opportunity to see it super early, as well as a bonus entry only for patrons. Support the habit at patreon.com slash dosabuckley. People throw the term cultural icon around a lot to describe anyone who's reached a certain level of fame. But to me, a cultural icon is someone that people know even though they have no interest in whatever it is they do. Hulk Hogan is a great example of this. Even if you never watched pro wrestling in the 80s and 90s, or you thought it was dumb, or whatever, you knew who Hulk Hogan was. Even if you hated pop music in the 80s and 90s, you knew who Madonna was even if you only knew her as the woman with the cones on her tits. And although I don't know if Taylor Swift's got a decent leg drop on her, plenty of parallels can be drawn to Taylor and Madonna's careers. Both were arguably the biggest female pop stars of their eras, both have had nine number one albums on Billboard, and both continuously reinvent themselves to stay relevant. In Taylor's case, going from making country for people who don't own pickup trucks, to pop music for girls going through breakups, to now making folk music for people who think Simon and Garfunkel are the human and the cat in the old newspaper comic about the orange tabby who eats lasagna. And it's because of this icon status that tickets for her upcoming tour are at such a high demand that during the pre-sale, not the general on-sale, but the pre-sale, Ticketmaster crashed due to the sheer volume of people trying to get tickets. After that, they cancelled the general on-sale, saying there was insufficient inventory. In other words, they sold all the tickets during the pre-sale. In fact, Ticketmaster says that even with the technical issues, they set records. Over 2 million tickets were sold in a single day for the 47 shows that they handled, which would average out to 42,553 tickets per show. Those are massive crowds. They go on to make two other claims that will be important here in a few minutes, though of course there's no way to know whether they're true or not. 1. All of the tickets were sold to verified individuals. None were sold to bots, even though they say they had bot attacks that drove traffic up and crashed the site. They claim that everyone had to enter their pre-sale invite code at the beginning to enter the queue, and then again at the end to buy the tickets. Is this bullshit? I mean, a computer couldn't possibly be trained to enter a password twice, could it? But that's what they're claiming, along with claim number two. Less than 5% of tickets were back on the secondary market days after the sale, which they say typically 20 to 30% of tickets end up back on the secondary market. I think this is my favorite part of the Ticketmaster statement, though. They basically blame Taylor for not working hard enough. Even when a high demand on sale goes flawlessly from a tech perspective, many fans are left empty-handed. For example, based on the volume of traffic to our site, Taylor would need to perform over 900 stadium shows, almost 20 times the number of shows she is doing. That's a stadium show every single night for the next 2.5 years. <laughs> yeah, Taylor, get your skinny flat ass on that fucking stage for the next 900 days and make your fans happy. Taylor, of course, released her own statement, saying, I'm not going to make excuses for anyone because we asked them multiple times if they could handle this kind of demand, and we were assured they could. It's truly amazing that 2.4 million people got tickets, but it really pisses me off that a lot of them feel like they went through several bear attacks to get them. Now, as much as I would love to see a reality show where Taylor Swift fans have to run through a gauntlet of grizzlies to win tickets, maybe do some promotional tie-ins with Cocaine Bear in theaters February 24th, this is some hyper-dramatic bullshit, which I guess should be expected from the girl who made high school boy drama is the most important thing in the world, her gimmick for so many years. People sitting on their couch at home, waiting in a queue to buy tickets for a concert feels like several bear attacks? <laughs> Imagine if these people encountered a real hardship in their lives. But yes, Taylor shouldn't make excuses for anyone, because this is on her, at least partially. Is Ticketmaster the absolute worst? Yes, no question. The fees they charge, the effective monopoly they have on ticket sales, the fact that they encourage ticket resales and take a cut from scalpers, enabling them. Garbage company. But if she wanted to absolutely make sure that resellers didn't gobble up tickets, she could do it. 
I know, we're not allowed to say his name anymore, but Louis C.K. sorted this shit out years ago. He would actually invalidate tickets sold on sites like StubHub if they were being sold for more than face value, then refund the original buyer their money and make the seats available again at their regular price. And he flat out told his audience, if you buy tickets from a scalper, when you show up, you might not get in. Looking at StubHub right now, there are tons of tickets available for $600 to $3,000 or more at various shows. If Louis C.K. was able to know which exact tickets were available for resale, I think the biggest fucking pop star in the US, maybe in the world, could find out and deal with it. So, whether Ticketmaster is correct and it's only 5% of the total sales, or whether it was 50%, it doesn't matter. That's a problem that she and her team could solve if they wanted to. But it's too much work, so they don't. She also needs to set expectations for her audience. As Ticketmaster said, she would have to do 900 shows to meet demand. Let's say that's overinflated, even by double. Could she do 450 shows? Hell, what about one third? How about just 300 shows in, let's say, 365 days? Of course not. That would be absolutely grueling. Her audience has to understand there's one of her and literally millions of them. Not everyone gets to see their favorite tall stick bug perform live. So, what's the reasonable response when you don't get what you want? Well, in America, you sue. Earlier this week, a group of Taylor Swift fans filed a lawsuit against Ticketmaster and Live Nation, seeking damages. <laughs> what damages? The emotional damages of not being able to go see a concert? There are no tangible damages. You didn't lose any money. After all, you didn't spend any money on tickets. Remember? The system wouldn't let you, and it felt like you were mauled by a bear. Remember that? You could try and claim that you just had to go buy them through a reseller, and claim that the damages were whatever you had to pay over and above the regular price, but you didn't have to do anything. I know this will be a shocker, but Taylor Swift is not a life necessity. You know, considering these people are fans of a woman who sings an awful lot of songs about how the people you love will inevitably disappoint you, it seems that none of them have learned a single fucking thing. So, to recap, should ticket scalpers have their testicles removed, force-fed to them, removed again from their stomach before they've been digested, and then force-fed back to them again? <laughs> yes, of course. No question. Does Ticketmaster suck soft shit off a hard marble surface? Big time, just slurping it up. But this is simply a supply and demand problem. No matter what, even if every single ticket absolutely was purchased by a fan, there would still be fans who wanted to go but can't, who felt that they got screwed over by Ticketmaster, and who would eventually say, Oh my god, I'll pay anyone $5,000 to see her, I just need to because my entire identity is wrapped up in another person's fame and I have zero unique personality traits of my own! Sorry Taylor, you've become too famous for your own good. I think the only thing you can do now is clone yourself several times, and have those clones perform shows until every last person is completely sick of you and never wants to see you again. And then, once you're done with the clones? They can appear on Celebrity Gauntlet of Grizzlies. Everyone on the planet who loved you got to see you perform, and everyone who hated you gets to see you eaten by a bear. You truly have the chance to make the entire world happy, Taylor. What a gift.